Hi guys, this is Ishwa here. My teammates are Babya, Aditya, Iraj and Hardik. Today, me and my team are going to present the PPT regarding explosives and we are going to discuss some content regarding power to weight ratio, classification, high explosives, secondary high explosives, low explosives and precautions and rocket propellant and classification of propellant comparison between solid and liquid propellant. From here, Hardik will take over. Definition of an explosive An explosive or explosive material is a reactive substance that contains a great amount of potential energy that can produce an explosion if released suddenly, usually accompanied by the production of light, heat, sound and pressure. An explosive charge is measured quantity of explosive material which may either be composed solely of one ingredient or be a mixture containing at least two substances. Power to weight ratio The amount of power available from a given weight of explosive is called power to weight ratio. A general theory of explosives is that the detonation of the explosive's charge causes a high velocity shock wave and a tremendous release of gas. The shock wave cracks and crushes the rock near the explosives and creates thousands of cracks in the rock. These cracks are then filled with the expanding gases. The gases continue to fill and expand the cracks until the gas pressure is too weak to expand the cracks any further or are vented from the rock. It has been estimated that during an explosion, a temperature of 5000 degrees Celsius and 230,000 kg per centimeter square pressure is produced. From here, Iraj will take over. Now I am going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of explosive. Explosive can be used for construction purposes like the creation of dams, tunnels, roads in hills, mining of coal, metal, it is. They are often used for destruction purposes like animation such as aerial bomb, rocket, torpedoes, grenade, etc. It should produce high volume of gases product and enormous heat. It should be stable under normal conditions, should not be volatile and hygroscopic. The rate of decomposition should be high to produce a large volume of gases product exothermally. Age of decomposition should be also be high. It must have at least one chemical bond that can easily be broken. For this, the molecule must contain weak unstable bond like NN, NCL, OCL, ATC. From here, Bhavya will take over. Hi guys, I'm Bhavya. I'm gonna be talking about classification of explosives. Explosives are classified on the basis of their sensitivity for initiation and explosive power. Explosives are of three types, primary high explosives, secondary high explosives and low explosives. Primary high explosives. Primary high explosives is also known as detonating or initiating explosive. They initiate the main explosion. These initiators are generally organic salts like lead aside, mercury filaminate, etc. Organic detonators like DDNP and tetrazine are also used. Detonators are highly sensitive explosives which explode on receiving a single shock or maybe by fire. They are mainly used in small quantities in shells and in cartridges to start or initiate the explosion of the main explosives which are less sensitive. Commonly used detonators are lead azide, mercury filaminate, tetrazine and dynol.
lead azide it is a very popular for military purposes the cap of lead azide is loaded with aluminium as it is very reactive towards brass mercury filuminate it is prepared by treating mercury with ethyl alcohol in the presence of nitric acid it is more sensitive and expensive than lead azide it is slightly toxic tetrasan it is a low initiating primary explosive it is prepared from nitroguanine it ignites easily has high heat on explosion and produces a large volume of gases the below given image is the equation of the set process dienol it is prepared by pyramic acid dienol is very sensitive and has high brisance secondary high explosives high explosives with the help of detonators blast with high energy and high exploding rate these explosives are insensitive to flame and mechanical shock however are quite stable types single compound explosive binary explosive plastic explosive and dynamites single compound explosive this group contains only one chemical compound some important members of this group are aluminum nitrate they are non toxic very stable cheap and have low brisance value it cannot be stored in containers made of cu and its alloy since it forms tetramine cupric nitrate complex which can detonate readily tnt trinitrotoluene it is prepared by direct nitration of toluene with a mixture of fuming nitric acid and fuming sulfuric acid the below given image is the equation of the set process rdx or saxonite it is prepared from hexamethylene tetramine it is a powerful high explosive binary explosives they consist of a mixture of tnt with other explosives they are more convenient to make and superior to single compound explosive in certain application generally binary explosive mixture are heated to liquid state and poured into containers and allowed to solidify some important binary explosives are given below plastic explosives this is a combination of high explosives with oil or wax and can be molded into desired shapes without any risk they are available in sheets dynamites it is prepared industrially by adding one part of glycerol in a thin stream to three times of concentrated nitric acid in the presence of five parts of concentrated sulfuric acid the reaction mixture is maintained around 20 degrees celsius when glycerol trinitrate heated rapidly explodes violently giving oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide and steam the total volume of gases released is about 11000 times the volume of glycerol trinitrate Now a days dynamite is prepared by absorbing glycerol trinitrate on sawdust and adding ammonium nitrate to it. The amount of absorbent that is added to the dynamite varies with its relative strength. Low explosives. These explosives are substances whose rate of decomposition is very slow and controllable. hence they simply burn and do not explode suddenly they are used as propellants to missiles rockets and in cartridge cases of rifles gunpowder or black powder it is a mixture of 75% potassium nitrate 15% charcoal and 10% sulfur it contains sufficient oxygen to combine with other elements present 
when it is ignited. The decomposition re reaction is given below. The excess of carbon and sulfur proceeds through slow reduction reaction resulting in the formation of more gases. Large volume of gaseous products account for its explosive effect. Smokeless powder. It is prepared by treating cellulose with nitric acid and sulfuric acids. The nitrocellulose soap form is dissolved in a mixture of ether and alcohol and then the solvent is evaporated when a jelly-like solid is left behind. On explosion, it does not produce any smoke and hence is called smokeless powder. It produces only CO2, CO, HO and N2. Rocket propellant definition: Rocket propellant is either a high oxygen containing fuel or a mixture of fuel and oxygen. The propellants on burning produce high energy in the form of hot gases and a pressure of 300 kg centimeter square, which escapes from the nozzle of very high velocities. Due to this, the rocket moves in the opposite direction. Requisites of a good propellant: Combustion should be uniform, slow, and steady. It should possess low ignition delay. It should have high density. It should have high specific impulse and produce low molecular weight fuel gases like CO2 and N2. It should not be toxic or corrosive. It should be stable over wide ranges of temperatures. It should be non hydroscopic Classification of propellants. Propellants can be divided into solid propellants and liquid propellants liquid propellants liquid propellants can further be divided into monopropellants and bioliquid rocket propellants monopropellants a monopropellant is a fuel as well as a oxidizer in the same molecule or in a solution containing both these the oxidants used are h2o2 chcno2 and the fuels used are ch3oh Bioliquid rocket propellants. These are more widely used propellants. In this type, fuel and oxidant are kept in a separate container and are injected in the combustion chamber separately. Commonly used fuels are liquid hydrogen, hydrazine, ethyl alcohol, aniline, and kerosene oil. It consists of oxidants like liquid O2, liquid O3, H2O2, fuming HNO3. The liquid propellants have a higher specific impulse and combustion can be controlled. Some examples of liquid propellants are liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen and kerosene, liquid oxygen and ethanol, liquid oxygen and methane. Solid propellants. Solid propellants can also be further divided into homogeneous solid rocket propellant and heterogeneous solid rocket propellant. Homogeneous solid rocket propellant. When solid propellant and oxidant is thoroughly mixed in colloidal state, it is called homogeneous solid propellant. The oxidants used are NH4ClO4, KClO4 or KNO3. When single propellant is employed, it is called single base propellant. A solid propellant which contains two materials is called double base propellant. Heterogeneous solid rocket propellant. The oxidants and fuel used are in two distinct phases. The oxidant used are NH4ClO4, KClO4 or KNO3. The fuels used are hydrocarbons, synthetic rubber, etc. The oxidizer should be stable, non-hydroscopic with contact with fuel and does not form any corrosive products. They are safe to handle and can be stored in combustion chamber. Some examples of solid propellants are liquid oxygen, oxidizer, specific impulse, titan, ammonium, etc.
here by our ppt and special thanks to chandrakala ma'am for guiding and explaining thank you ma'am